Thank you to, uh, to TWIST for inviting me to speak here today, and thank you to all of you for staying for the last talk. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a comparison of uh, capture methods for FFP RNA sequencing, and I think it will complement a lot of the talks that you've already heard here today. First, I want to begin with a little bit of background on foundation medicine for those of you who are not familiar. We're a molecular information company that is transforming cancer care. We're fundamentally uh, changing the way patients are diagnosed and treated in oncology. We work with both academic uh, medical centers as well as community hospitals. We also have partnerships with um, many biopharmaceutical companies to help um, move along the drug development pipeline. And with all of that, we're able to offer precision medicine to treat almost all um, types of cancer. But to do this, you need a, f a robust uh, platform. So here's kind of an overview of uh, the foundation medicine lab process. We're translating NGS into a clinical cancer diagnostic assay, and that requires extensive optimization and investment. And so here's kind of an overview of, of the workflow. So we have um, an extraction. Here I'm evaluating uh, DNA extraction from FFPE tissue, formalin fixed paraffin embedded, or from slides. Now we've worked internally to take commercially available protocols and optimize them to work specifically with, with these difficult sample types. We then have uh, library construction and hybrid capture that we've customized. We then sequence. Uh, the majority of our sequencing occurs on the HiSeq 4000 platform. And then we have our analysis pipeline. This is a custom in-house pipeline that has been um, developed to call all four classes of alterations. We're able to call base substitutions, short indels, um, insertions and deletions, copy number alterations, as well as gene fusions, translocations, and rearrangements. All of that is then um, analyzed and interpreted and presented into a clinical report in which a cl clinician can then determine the best patient um, care for their patient. So we have a comprehensive product portfolio. I won't go into a lot of detail in um, the essence of saving time, but I do want to highlight some, some key points on this slide. So we have a variety of, of uh, assays. We have two that are FDA approved. Uh, Foundation One CDX has uh, FDA approved uh, CDX for 17 targeted therapies. It's for all solid tumors. It uh, interrogates over 300 different genes from, from DNA. We're also able to uh, give results for genomic signatures and biomarkers. Uh, two of them I'd like to highlight are tumor mutational burden and microsatellite instability. Both of these are important in immunotherapy and determining if your patient will respond to, to immunotherapy drugs. And we can report, again, all, all different uh, four classes of alterations. We also offer um, some CLIA products. We have Foundation One, which is very similar to Foundation One CDX. We also have Foundation One Heme, which is specific for hematological uh, malignancies as well as sarcomas. And this assay interrogates both DNA and RNA from, from samples. And that's really important that we'll, I'll bring up later. And then we have Foundation ACT, which is our liquid biopsy assay, which uh, looks at circulating tumor DNA and is able to uh, look at 62 different uh, genes um, and, uh, from peripheral blood and then also be able to look at point mutations, insertions, deletions copy number, and rearrangements. We also offer IHC testing to complement the immunotherapy um, portfolio. So in our Foundation One Heme product, we're, we're interested in looking at both DNA and RNA. But as Sean pointed out, there's lots of challenges with, with DNA FFP sequencing. So I'm going to focus on the challenges of FFP RNA sequencing. It's really important uh, sample type in, in clinical uh, cancer diagnostics in heme malignancies and sarcomas. We're, we're interested in looking at fusions. In immunotherapy, uh, the, the field is moving to look at RNA biomarkers um, and neoepitope detection, and so FFP is going to be a very important sample type um, in that realm. But the fixation process can lead to varying sample quality and performance. And so here is a, a tape station uh, profile of two RNA samples. Both of them are lung samples. Um, from two different sites. And you can see that the, the, the sample in blue has, has a RIN score of about six. You can actually see some, some ribosomal peaks or some high molecular weight RNA there. But the sample in red um, is mostly very small molecular weight material and has a RIN of, of 2.4. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of variability in the, in the quality of the samples. And this is very challenging um, in the clinical setting to be able to work with samples that have a varying quality and you have low, low yield. We have little limited tissue, and we have low yield of extracted RNA from these samples. And there's also a high abundance of unwanted RNA, uh, transcripts, such as ribosomal RNA. And this can really reduce your, your sequencing efficiency. 
So there's several different methods that you can use to, to sequence FFP and to enrich for um, your genes of interest. Today I'm going to talk about using capture-based methods to do that. Uh, so in late 2017, we were approached by Twist to, to evaluate their, their exome um, enrichment product and um, to do it both in a multiplex and singleplex capture, and that's the data that I'll present today. And so we wanted to compare the performance of the, the Twist exome enrichment to the RNA um, access, or now it's called RNA exome from Illumina. So the TrueSeq RNA access kit is a capture-based workflow for profiling the transcriptome. It, the target territory is about 400 megabases. It's compatible with FFP. We found that the desired input of about 100 nanograms of FFP works well, and that multiplex capture of up to four samples. The human core exome enrichment from TWIST is, again, a capture-based workflow. The target ter territory is about 33 megabases, and is designed as a multiplex capture of up to eight samples. So the comparison questions that we wanted to ask is, is the TWIST exome enrichment kit compatible with FFP RNA? Is the performance similar to what we see with RNA access? And we also had the opportunity to, twist, to test the TWIST workflow in both a multiplex and singleplex capture. We wanted to compare the performance between both of those. So here's our experimental design. We um, tested a variety of different samples. Uh, we began with um, HapMap DNA as well as uh, universal human reference RNA, or what I'll call UHRR for the rest of the talk. This is a mix of 10 different um, cell line RNA. We chemically fragment this RNA so that it has a similar molecular weight distribution as some poor quality FFP sample, so there's, there's low molecular weight molecules. We also extracted RNA from um, Horizon Discovery's FFPE uh, control, and we also used procured FFP samples um, with both low and high quality, so things that had, you know, RINs of five or six, and then things that had RINs of, of one or two. We used a modification of the NEB Ultra 2 RNA kit to generate the libraries um, for TWIST with uh, our own FMI adapters. We performed hybrid capture following each of the manufacturer's protocols. We performed RNA access as outlined, and then TWIST as, as outlined. I do want to note that for some of the really low quality FFP samples, the amount of input uh, DNA into the capture was below the recommended amount. So for some samples, we could only put in 85 nanograms, and that's what we put into capture, just to highlight. We sequenced these on a HiSeq 4000 using paired 75 base read length. And for analysis pipeline, we're using HiSTAT2 as our gap aligner, and then using string tie to, to do transcript quantitation. And today I'm going to um, use uh, transcripts per million as, as the metric there. And so metrics for, for comparison, um, we have, here I have a table that outlines our, the metric and then the target performance. And we set these performance metrics for UHRR, but wanted to evaluate how FFP performs. So I'm going to show you the, both the performance of controls as well as FFPs for each of these metrics. So first, for total reads, we wanted to ensure that each sample could, could obtain at least 25 million uh, total read pairs. And then we wanted um, on-target read pairs to be greater than or equal to 20 million. And for number of genes detected, we wanted to have about 15,000 genes detected with the transcript per million uh, greater than or equal to one. As I mentioned, we wanted to have a low alignment to ribosomal RNA. So we have a percent ribosomal, um, we'd like that to be less than 5%. We wanted to have a high alignment to coding. We wanted that to be greater than 70%. Um, and our coverage uniformity metric that we're going to use is the median coefficient of variation of coverage for the top 1,000 transcripts. We wanted this to be less than 0.6. And for technical reproducibility, we wanted to have an average Spearman correlation between replicates of 0.9 for genes with a TPM of greater than 0.1. So now I'm going to walk through uh, the performance of both kits in a single and multiplex format for each of these metrics. So first, total read pairs um, by method. So on, on this, this plot and all the other plots that I'll show you in this talk is a very similar layout, so I'm just going to quickly go over that. We have twi the plots are on the x-axis. We have twist multiplex followed by twist, I mean twist singleplex followed by multiplex, and then RNA access singleplex followed by RNA access multiplex. The red symbol is the HapMap DNA control. The blue symbols are the are the RNA controls. There's UHRR replicates as well as the Horizon FFPE, and then the the procured FFP samples are the green symbols. And what you'll see is that in the multiplex capture. Uh, as, as kind of Sean mentioned um, earlier, that we see uh, uneven distribution of, of total read pairs when you, when you pair both high quality and low quality samples together. So you can see that the, the higher quality samples have a higher number total uh, pairs, and the poor performing uh, 
FFP samples do not meet our cutoff of, of 20 million um, total read pairs. And this is true with both the twist multiplex as well as the RNA access. But you can see that when we perform these captures in a single plex format, we're able to have very tight uh, uh, distribution of, of total read pairs for both the poor FFP samples as well as the high quality samples in both the twist and the RNA access. So next, looking at on-target read pairs. So again, same, same type of plot. Um, and you'll see a similar profile here. In the multiplex, we have you know, the, the poor quality FFP samples are not able to meet the cutoff of greater than 20 million uh, on-target read pairs uh, in both twist and RNA access. But when we use the exact same samples but do a, a single plex capture, we're able to have um, all samples meet the criteria. Next, we wanted to look at the number of genes detected. And just to remind you, the target here is to have greater than 15,000 genes detected with the transcript per million count of greater than or equal to one. So on the table, uh, we have twist multiplex and singleplex and RNA access multiplex and singleplex. We're looking at replicates of low, that low quality UHRR. So you have replicate one and replicate two. And what you can see is that there's a nice uh, reproducibility with, with both replicates. We're calling approximately the same number of genes in each capture. And it's very similar between multiplex and singleplex and twists. Uh, both multiplex and singleplex meet this criteria of greater than 15,000 genes. The RNA access was, was slightly lower. It was just below that at 14,500, reproducible, but, but below the, the target that we were looking for. So the next uh, metric was percent of reads aligning to ribosomal RNA. We wanted to have less than 5% of reads aligned to, to ribosomal RNA. So you can see that um, all, all samples were able to, to meet that metric. The, the FFPs are, are kind of right at that cutoff, um, but they were able to be, to be less, uh, less than or equal to 5%. Um, one thing to know, RNA access was slightly better here. It was able to be under 2% for all samples, but um, the twist samples were were uh, under 5%, and really no significant difference between multiplex or singleplex capture. Now, percent of reads aligning to coding, our target here was to have greater than 70%, and what you can see is that um, the twist singleplex and multiplex have a very high percent of reads aligning to coding. It's, it's greater than 90% for, for all samples. Um, RNA access is, is slightly lower. It's in, it's in the 80%. Um, one thing to note is the slight difference here is that the RNA access has um, slightly higher percent of reads aligning to uh, UTRs and intergenic regions than, than the twist um, capture. So the next metric we wanted to look at was the median coefficient of variation of coverage of the top 1,000 transcripts. You know, here you want to be, have, be as ideal as to be zero. Um, our target was to have a CV of less than 0.6 for, for UHRR. And you can see that uh, the twist, multiplex, and singleplex met this metric. There's, there's one, the horizon FFP is slightly above um, 0.6, but UHRR is, is, is this uh, horizontal uh, blue rectangle there. So the twist, multiplex, and singleplex were both, ab both able to meet this metric. Uh, it's not surprising that the, there's more variation in the coverage in FFP samples than in something like uh, UHRR. The RNA access um, was unable to meet this target performance um, with both control samples as well as FFPs. The next, the final metric is we were interested in the correlation of expression between the capture methods and within replicates. Um, so I'm just going to kind of slowly walk through this. So this, we're looking at Spearman correlation of replicates where we have um, for genes that are greater, have a TPM of greater than 0.1. And here we're looking at, there's about 9,000 genes that were expressed in, in every, between all the samples that we tested. And so this is the correlation of looking at those 9,000 genes. On the top left is, is the RNA access data. So we have two replicates um, for the multiplex capture with UHRR, and we have two replicates for the singleplex capture with UHRR. The color code, the lighter the, the color, the lower the correlation, the darker the color, the higher the correlation. And so on this top left, you can see that we have a very good correlation between um, replicates in both RNA access multiplex and singleplex. Now the same data is presented on the bottom um, right, but for the twist data. And you can see again, we have very good correlation um, of replicates with UHRR in both multiplex and singleplex capture. Now on the, the bottom left and the top right, that's looking between, between platforms. And again, the, the correlation is, is, is really great. It's around 0.89 to 0.91 for, for, the, varying for the various replicates. So this was, this was really great to see. 
Um, it's always great to see how these methods compare with FFP samples. That's really kind of a, a test. So this is a, a similar data. I, we weren't able to do replicates with, with all of the FFPE samples, so there's just, there's just one for each. Um, similar plots, we have FF, one FFP sample on the left and a different one on the right. This is within RNA access on the top left, very good correlation, and within twist on the, on the bottom right, and again, very good correlation. And between platforms, it's very high. So next I want to show you expression is reproducible between both multiplex and singleplex captures. Now this is looking at greater than 20,000 genes. This is looking at all the genes that we're able to detect uh, with a TPM of greater than 0.1. On the x-axis is twist uh, singleplex, and on the y-axis is twist multiplex. On the left, we're looking at performance with uh, UHRR, and on the right, we're looking at performance with uh, low-quality FFPE. So you can see that with both UHR and, and FFP, we're getting very good expression correlation between multiplex and singleplex capture. And then on this slide, we're looking at the same comparison, but with RNA access as a singleplex versus multiplex capture. And you'll see a, a very similar um, profile in which we have very good correlation with UHRR um, between singleplex and multiplex capture, as well as low-quality FFPE. So to summarize uh, the performance here, I hope I'm able to demonstrate to you that both uh, twist multiplex and singleplex was able to meet all of the target um, metrics that we had set forth in this experiment for total read pairs, on target read pairs, number of genes detected, ribosomal RNA content, and, and coverage uniformity, as well as reproducibility. And the performance was um, similar to that of, of RNA access, um, but slightly better coverage in uh, so the better performance and number of genes detected in median coverage. And just to summarize, I think we demonstrated that this whole exome capture workflow is compatible with FFP RNA. The performance is very similar to Illumina's RNA access. Uh, the singleplex capture is generated robust and reproducible performance with FFP samples. And I think, uh, though we didn't discuss it, the flexibility of the twist bait set and content and adaptability to a custom clinical workflow is desirable. So with that, I just want to acknowledge a few people. Um, there are many folks at Foundation that are not here that, that did a lot of the lab work and the computational work, so I want to uh, thank them. And uh, TWIST, particularly Mark and Scott, for helping get access to this uh, kit in, in an early, early uh, availability. So thank you.